Hello there and welcome back to another video on today which is Friday and I certainly hope that you're having a good day or you have a good day ahead of you anyway. It's a bit strange actually having to do um, a sort of, not necessarily a review of a game but like looking at a game that we didn't get to watch and have only really recently just been able to see the highlights of it but yesterday Liverpool played Blackburn in a friendly and Liverpool won 6-0. Now, the result itself doesn't actually matter. Um, you'll see a lot of Arsenal fans going in uproar at the fact that they got beat by Brentford 3-2. But actually, that'll do them, that'll actually do Arsenal a lot of good, you'd think. Um, and, and on, you know, ironing, ironing out some, you know, defensive details and such like that, where they seem to have slipped up here. But it looks like Liverpool have got a good spread of goals. And if you haven't seen the highlights... You can either go on LFC TV um, if you're a member there and watch it, or if you just go if you go on like Twitter or something like that and just type in uh, Liverpool Blackburn highlights, you'll find a video. It's about two minutes long, maybe two minutes fourteen, something like that, and you'll see all of the goals. You might not have any commentary or anything like that, but it doesn't matter. You'll see the goals, and the goals were actually really, really good. Some nice finishes, some nice curled finishes. Hoover. Um, especially got a nice one as well. But there was some really nice link-up play between a lot of the players as well. The goal scorers were um, Sadio Mane, Naby Keita, Minamino, Joel Matip, Hoover and Leighton Clarkson. And the last goal, Clarkson's goal, was probably the most well-worked goal as like a team goal, if anything. And it was really nice to see the two young lads, Hoover and Clarkson, get on the score sheet as well. Cla um, Hoover's is a really nice first-time First time shot curl into the top corner. I think it hits the post as well. Really, really nice. But if anything, what it shows us as fans is, and obviously Jurgen Klopp as well, reading his interview from afterwards as well, he was really pleased with the intensity, the fact that they were able to, because of how Blackburn were going to set up against us, and they did, apparently, um, where they were going to set up quite defensively, we were able to sort of practice counter-pressing and high-pressing as well to win the ball back. But it looked really quite fluid. They they weren't in the highlights, but there are people saying that you know Blackburn did have their chances and Allison had had us covered. Um, the defense was pretty okay for most of the time, um, or if not pretty solid, they were pretty solid. Um, so they had their chances. Um, they didn't take them. Um, we were ready for them. I think Kelleher came on later on as well um, to replace Allison. Um, the only concern that Liverpool will have right now is Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain. Apparently picked up an ankle injury. Could be an ankle knock. Don't know whether that will rule him out of the of contention for the Merseyside derby game. We will have to see. Hopefully it's not going to be a, le a lengthy injury for Oxlade-Chamberlain because he's such he can be such a key player for us and it would be really disappointing for him um, and us as well because I love seeing Oxlade-Chamberlain play. His dr I think he got an assist as well, maybe for Mane's goal. Um... But regardless of that, he's very, very good at driving us forward, giving us energy, going from the midfield forward especially. So I'd really like to see him play, and I hope he's not going to have a long-term injury at all. Um, other players that were missing for this game was Mohamed Salah and Andy Robertson. Apparently they've got knocks, but it's not thought to rule them out of the Merseyside derby just yet. So we'll see what happens there. Um, so that could possibly be three injuries for us um, ahead of the Merseyside derby. But I think even regardless of that, we should be well prepared. Um, and off the face of this performance, I, I, I really wish, instead of just the highlights, I, th I wish that they, that we could you know, see the full game. Because I would watch the full game, even knowing the result afterwards. I would want to watch the full game to see just how we're doing right now. You know, It's been nearly you know, two and a half to three months out of action at the moment since the Champions League anyway against Atletico Madrid. Um, it's been a long time for these guys and for them, yeah, all right, they bang away six goals, that's fine. And to have six different goal scorers as well, that's pretty cool as well. But um, I would be looking more for how we're playing, the link-up play. You see some of it in the match highlights, you see some of it in the goal highlights of um, you know, the link-up play between players. Minamino and Naby Keita looked absolutely sharp as hell. To be fair, from what I saw... Everybody looked sharp. Everybody looked really, really good. They really did. Um, so, look, it can only give us a little indication of what, what could happen um, against Everton as well. I don't know if we're going to have another friendly um, before then because it's we don't play until the 21st 
on the Sunday. So there's still plenty of time, really, uh, to get things going. And we'll see what happens anyway. Um, but I'm looking forward to it now. Like it, it, it's, it's ramping up the reality of football for the Premier League and Liverpool coming back. To see them even in the highlights was really, really exciting. Um, so I'm really looking forward to Liverpool coming back. And I'm, I know that Liverpool fans are, in general, looking forward to Liverpool coming back as well. Everything is ramping up right now. Uh, it's, what, seven days away until uh, the Man City uh, Arsenal games and the Sheffield and uh, Aston Villa games as well. So it, it's ramping up. What I wanted to let you guys know is I'm going to do separate match previews for every single match. I'm going to try my hardest to do that, right? It's maybe going to be like maybe five minute videos for each one. They will get released on separate sort of days or maybe, you know, maybe two videos a day or something like that spread out a little bit. But I want to cover every single match as much as possible. So that means in about the space of six weeks, I'm going to end up doing 92 videos for every single, every single game. There's going to be a bigger priority for me on the Liverpool games. They will probably get the bigger you know scale of video maybe the 10 minute videos or something like that get the computer back involved and um, looking at statistics looking at how we can break down teams but i want to go in and have a look at every single game that's going to be played look at the permutations of what could happen who is going to you know if it's a relegation fighting team or a scrap there or if it's a top four top six fighting team anything like that i want to get into the details of it and then i want to try and do that moving forward as well whenever the next season happens that is what I want to start doing, ramping up the videos um, and ramping up the content and the, what I can talk about. And I think that that could actually be really good. I'm really invested in wanting to do that. If I can, Once I go back to work, whenever that is, I, w I w will still aim to do that as well. So let me know what you think of that idea um, in the comments below anyway. Um, and then I think the only thing to finish off with is two separate things. So obviously, you know, Liverpool fans are concerned about what could happen with the transfer market and Liverpool apparently looking like the purse strings are going to be pretty tight this season uh, or going into the transfer market anyway. Now, I'll mention his name and it will not, it won't give confidence to a lot of people obviously because of what happened. Um, but there's two players that will come back to Liverpool I think this season or after this season is finished, um, which is Marco Gruic who I'm very excited about, having seen a couple of performances from him with Hertha Berlin, and he has apparently turned into quite a key player for those guys. He could come in, and he could be a very good, um, if not squad rotation player, he would be a very good option for us in the midfield, and the other one would be Lloris Karius. Now, I've spoken about Karius before, so I'm not going to go into too much detail. You can find a separate video of that um, pretty recently, if anything, maybe even just a couple of weeks ago. Have a look for it, and I've done a video about what I think of Karius coming back personally i'll give you a short breakdown take away that real madrid performance um out of take that out of your memory and the fact that he had the concussion and everything the elbow from ramos and all that sort of stuff that actually hindered his performance take that performance away he was doing very well he was he was he was doing very well he had the clean sheet um record not record i think he had the most clean sheets that season in the champions league ahead of everybody, ahead of Alisson. I think he was one ahead of Alisson or something like that um, when he was playing for Roma. He was very, very good for us. Had a horrible performance against Real Madrid, which wasn't entirely his fault. I believe that he could come back in, and if we're looking as a number for another number two instead of Adrian, I would be happy for it to be um, Carriers. Let me know what you think of that in the comments below. And I'm also excited to see uh, Marco Gruic come back into the Liverpool setup and what he can do. He he has grown very, very much as a player over in Germany and with Hertha Berlin. Um, his loan spells have actually done him a, real, a really good amount of good, which is good to hear as well, because a lot of loan spells these days for any players, not just Liverpool players, don't always seem to go very, very well. But we will have to see what happens. Obviously, then we'll also have the likes of Ryan Brewster coming back um, from his loan at Swansea. Pretty sure there's some other players as well. But I'm excited to see what can happen next year with some of these guys like Brewster, uh, Marco Gruic, and also Karius, as much as, as unromantic as his name is to Liverpool fans. I'm, I'm happy to give the guy another chance as, as, a, as a number two to study under the best goal, one of the best goalkeepers in the world, if not the best goalkeeper in the world, in Alisson and our coaching staff. I'd really look forward to that. And then just to finish off, um, it is becoming quite clear 
that yes, while we've got some injury concerns as well with um, Salah and Robertson and obviously Alex Oxley Chamberlain right now, um, our opponents on the 21st of June are also having their own injury concerns as well. Um, Jean Philippe Gabamin, um, who has played two games so far for Everton, I think he got injured in the second game or maybe training or something like that that he played, is now injured again. Um, Yeri Mina, the centre back, big towering centre back, is also injured. Um, and also now it seems that Theo Walcott um, has undergone surgery on an abdominal problem and it will rule him out of action for four weeks. Now that's not to say that oh great it's it's an absolute sure thing now we're gonna we're gonna totally you know wipe the floor with Everton or anything like that. They'll have replacements. You know Alex Awobi plays for, plays for them as well. He could come in to do a job there. Pretty sure that I don't know that all of their defenders um, and all of their midfielders and such like that. You know the fact that we've beaten Everton twice so far this season doesn't necessarily matter when it comes up to a brand new game like and when we, none of us have played for like three months so while I'm still optimistic that Liverpool can get the result they've got their injury issues as well some key players there well I can't say that Gabamin is a key player because he hasn't had time to establish himself as a key player because he's been injured Yerry Mina seems to do quite well for Everton um, when he plays in centre back and he seems to settle that defence down a little bit and Theo Walcott if anything Yes, he's got burst of pace, maybe not as much as he used to when he was at Arsenal, but he's also got an experienced head about him as well. So maybe they will miss that, and we aren't necessarily going to be missing the biggest of key players. Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain is a fantastic player. Um, Salah and Robertson, if they're missing, then yes, I'm, I'm going to be slightly concerned. I still think that we would be able to go out there and put on a good performance, but it concerns me if someone like Robertson, who is, for me, the very best left-back, and for Salah, who is one of the best forwards, not just in the Premier League, but in the world, that would start to concern me a little bit. But I think, even though it's the Merseyside derby, depending on what happens, you know, and who's available, I think a lot of us will start to cut a little bit of slack to the team and the squad and everything like that, because it is going to be intense coming back into Premier League pace action after so much time off. We're going to have to wait and see what happens with injuries and such like that, especially when the games start flowing as well and getting the whole Premier League engine starts to pick up speed and absolutely tunnel in towards the end. So listen, thank you ever so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed it, please do like it and subscribe if you're new around here. Please feel free to get your comments in below. Let me know if you like the idea of me doing videos and previews of every single game. Anyone that watches this channel, whenever I've done previews of other opposition teams, I will approach it in a very non-biased way. So even if I'm previewing a Manchester United game, I, I'm not going to go in there slagging Man United off, I'm not going to go slag Man City off, I'm not going to go slag Chelsea or anything like that off. It's literally, I'm a football fan, I'm a massive Liverpool fan, and I will always want my team to succeed. But when it comes to doing previews and such, I, it literally it, it becomes across as unbiased as possible. And I want to look at the facts and present them as I see them and give a good thought-out prediction. Let me know what you think of those ideas in the comments below anyway. Thank you once again. Have a very good day and hope you have a good weekend as well. And I'll catch you later.